Hello, my name is Luis Serrano and this video is about the covariance matrix. For a data set, the covariance matrix tells us a lot of information about it. So let's look at it. But first, let's start with other measures. The first one is the center of mass. The center of mass is the point where you would balance this data set if every point was an equal weight. We also call it the mean or the average. Then we also have the X variance, which tells us how much this data set is spread in the horizontal direction. And the Y variance, which tells us how much the data set is spread in the vertical direction. As you can see, this data set is a little more spread in the horizontal than in the vertical direction. So we expect this X variance to be higher than its Y variance. However, that doesn't tell us everything because the data set could be an oval or a circle or different things. Something that will tell us a bit more about the shape in the data set is the covariance. In this case, it will tell us it's elongated and it points in this diagonal direction. So that tells us a lot about the shape of our data set and then we can do things like fit a Gaussian to it, etc. So we have something called a covariance matrix, which encompasses a lot of this information. And it's simply the matrix formed by the variance in the X direction, the variance in the Y direction that goes in the diagonal, and the covariance, which goes in the places outside of the diagonal. Now this data set is two dimensional. So the covariance matrix is two by two. But if we had, for example, a 100 dimensional data set, then we would have a 100 by 100 covariance matrix. Now, in some cases, we're going to have points that are weighted. So we don't have the entire point in the data set, but we have half of a point or a third of a point or a tenth of a point we can still find the center of mass. This time it's going to be a little more up and to the right because the heavy points are up and to the right. We still have an X variance and we still have a Y variance and we still have a covariance. So in this video, I'll teach you how to calculate it. This is useful in algorithms like Gaussian mixture models, for example, which uses portions of points, etc. And we can also find the shape of this data set. So let's start with the average and let's start with a very small data set, these four points. So what is the center of mass? Well, the center of mass or average or mean is right here. What are the coordinates? Well, first we'll look at the first coordinate, the X coordinate and take the average of those four. So it's one plus three plus three plus five divided by four. And then let's do the same thing with the second coordinate, the Y coordinate, and we get this point. If we summarize it, we get the point 3 comma 2. So 3 comma 2 is the center of mass of this data set, and that's expected given the points. Now, what we normally want to do in order to calculate the covariant matrix is much easier, is that we look at the point 0, 0, and we take the data set and move the center to the point 0, 0, recalculating every weight. So we subtract 3 to every x coordinate and 2 to every y coordinate. So we end up with this new data set. We can look at it over here. And now I'm going to teach you how to find the X variance. So a measure of how spread in the horizontal direction is this data set. For this, we only need to look at the first coordinate, which is the X coordinate. And we simply take the average of the squares of these variables. Why the squares? Because we want to check how far it is from the origin. So we don't want a positive two to negate a negative two. We want them both to add because the farther points are in the X direction, the more variance there is. And that's why we take the average of the squares. In this case, it's one quarter of two squared plus zero squared plus zero squared plus minus two squared, which is two. Now to find the Y variance, it's exactly the same thing. So now we take the second coordinate, so the y coordinate, and we take the average of the squares. So one quarter times minus one squared plus minus one squared plus one squared plus one squared. And that is equal to one. So let's look at some examples of data sets. This one over here is pretty centered. So we expect it to have a small x variance and a small y variance. This one over here is pretty spread out, but only in the horizontal direction. So we expect it to have a large x variance and a small y variance. This one over here is pretty centered in the horizontal direction, but quite spread out in the vertical direction. So we expect it to have a small X variance, but a large Y variance. And this one is spread out in both directions. So we expect to have a large X variance and a large Y variance. 
However, x variance and y variance don't tell us the entire story. For example, let's take a look at these two data sets. Notice that if we calculate the x and y variance, they have the exact same x and y variance, which is 2 and 1. However, they are very different. One is sort of belonging to one diagonal, the other one is belonging to the other diagonal. So how do we tell these apart? And the way we're going to tell these apart is with something called a covariance. So how would you tell these two sets apart? Is there any equation other than sum of squares, which we know it doesn't work, that you would use to tell them apart? Well, one way is to look at these two points. In the left, they look like they form a diagonal that goes up and to the left, and on the right, it's the opposite diagonal. So what equation would work? Feel free to pause the video and think about it, and I'll tell you the answer. It's the product of the two coordinates. Take a look at this. Minus 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, and 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. That's at the left. Whereas at the right, they are 2 times 1 equals 2, and minus 2 times minus 1 equals, again, 2. So on the left, the points in this backwards diagonal have the property that the product of the coordinates is negative, whereas the ones on the right, the product of the coordinates is positive. So all we have to do is calculate the product of coordinates for all the other points, and the covariance is going to be the average of all the products of coordinates. So on the left is going to be the average of minus 2, 0, 0, and minus 2, which is minus 1, and on the right is going to be the average of 2, 0, 0, and 2 which is 1. So that is what's going to tell them apart, and that is covariance. Just for curiosity, let's calculate the covariance of this data set. What do you think it's going to be? So this data set is kind of centered. It doesn't skew in any of the two diagonals, so we would expect it to be something small or 0. Let's see. The product of coordinates are these, and they're always 0, so the average of four zeros is 0. So this set has covariance 0. So in general, if you have a data set that is like this, like the backwards diagonal, well, you would say that it has a negative covariance. If it's something like this, that it doesn't skew in any diagonal, it, it probably has a zero covariance, or at least a very small number. And these ones like this, that go in the positive diagonal, have positive covariance. If you're thinking correlation, covariance and correlation are very similar. They're not the exact same formula, but very similar. So you would say that if there's a variable in the x-axis and a variable in the y-axis, then on the graph on the left, they're negatively correlated. On the graph in the middle, they're not correlated or independent, perhaps. And in the graph on the right, they are positively correlated because as x increases, y also increases. So let's look at the actual formulas for these quantities that we learned. So if our data set is this, we're going to call the points x, i, y, i for i equals 1 to n because we have n points in our data set. So the mean or the center of mass is two numbers, mu x and mu y, and each one is just the average of the xi and the average of the yi. Now the x variance, well, all we have to do is subtract to every x the mu x, which is the, the, the average of the x coordinates, and take the average of those squares. Same thing for the y variance, to everything we subtract mu y, which is the I mean in the y direction, in the, in the vertical direction, and then take the square of everything, and then take the average. And the covariance is simply the average of the products of xi minus mu x and yi minus mu y. Finally, the covariance matrix is the one that in the main diagonal has all the variances, and outside of the main diagonal it has the covariances. Now that is almost the whole story, but let's remember that we talked at the beginning about data sets where the points appear as a fraction. So not the whole point appears, but maybe 10% of it or half of it or 80%, etc. For those, we can still calculate the average and the covariance matrix. And we do it in the exact same way, except now we weight the points. So let's look at it in the example that we saw at the beginning. So for these four points, the mean or the average or the center of mass is calculated this way. And notice that I took the average in a different way. I didn't divide by 4, but I divided by 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So it's one unit for each one of the points, and you'll see why. But now let's say we have a weighted data set. So instead of the bottom left point, we have a third of that point. So what happens now with 
the center of mass. Well, now it's not going to be where it used to be. Now it's going to be a little more toward the right and up. How do we calculate it? Well, we just add a one third in the corresponding weight and in the bottom in the corresponding unit. So we get 3.4 comma 2.2. So that's our new average. The next thing we do is we're going to center this data set. So we are going to subtract to every X coordinate 3.4 and to every Y coordinate 2.2 so that we're centering it in the point 0, 0. And that's going to make it much easier for us to calculate the variance, X variance, Y variance and the covariance. So let's start by calculating the X variance. So normally we would do this sum, the sum of squares of X coordinates divided by four, which is the number of points, so the average. However, the point at the bottom left is only there one third. It's not fully there. So we have to multiply its corresponding term by one third squared. The reason the square is because in the formula of the variance, you are adding a bunch of squares. So we calculate this and we get 0 0.88 for the new x variance. Same thing for the y variance. To its corresponding term in the average of squares of y coordinates, we multiply by one third square and we get 0 0.72. Notice that both the x variance and the y variance are smaller than the previous one. For the covariance, same thing. We are taking the average of the product of the coordinates, but to the corresponding term of that point, we multiply by one third square, so we get 0 0.64 as our covariance. And if you like formulas, here they are. Here are our points x1, y1, x2, y2, all the way to xn, yn. And each point comes with a corresponding weight. That is a number between 0 and 1 that tells us how much of the point is in the data set. So if it is, for example, 30%, then alpha 1 is 0.3. Now for the mean, we calculate it just like before, except, except instead of dividing by n, we divide it by the sum of alpha i, and each xi and yi gets weighted by alpha i. So it's just a weighted average. X variance, same thing, but it's now weighted by the square. So we divide it by the sum of alpha i squared, and each term gets multiplied by alpha i squared. Same thing for the y variance, and same thing for the covariance. And now we have our covariance matrix and this is pretty much it. This tells us a lot about the data set if the data set is weighted by some percentages. So thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to remind you that I have a book called Grokking Machine Learning and in this book I explain supervised learning, most of the algorithms and several techniques for applying machine learning to many real-life problems with code in Python. You can take a look at it in this webpage which is also linked in the comments and you can use a discount code called Serrano YT for a 40% discount in the price. So thank you very much for your attention. If you like this video, please subscribe for more content or hit like or share amongst your friends. And uh, I love when you comment, so please uh, give me a comment, tell me about what you like, what you didn't. And also if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to put them in the comments. Many videos have come out as an idea someone suggested in the comments. You can also tweet at me. My handle is Lewis Likes Math. And if you'd like to see a repository of all this information, all these videos, the book, uh, blog posts, etc., uh, please take a look at this webpage. It's serrano.academy. So that's all for today. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.